वी आर फोकसिंग ऑन विजयनगर एम्पायर फर्स्ट आई वॉन्ट टू डिस्कस अबाउट ब्रीफ दैट पर्टिक्युलरली सिचुएशन इन इंडिया वेन विजयनगर एम्पायर वॉज एस्टैब्लिश इट वॉज एस्टैब्लिश समवेर अराउंड थर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी सिक्स ऑलवेज से इन हिस्ट्री देर आर मेनी कॉन्ट्रोवर्सीज बिकॉज इन सम स्कॉलर्स दे आर मेन्शनिंग दैट धीस एम्पायर वॉज एस्टैब्लिश आफ्टर थर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड फोर्टी सिक्स सो दैट्स वाई आई एम सेइंग मोस्ट प्रोबेबली इट वॉज फाउंडेड अंडर सम कंडीशन इन थर्टीन हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी सिक्स यू आर अवेर दैट अल्लाउद्दीन खिलजी फर्स्ट मैनेज टू कॉन्कर देवगिरीज एम्पायर यादव एम्पायर बट यादव एम्पायर रिबेल्ड अगेन एंड अगेन विथ अल्लाउद्दीन खिलजी सो फर्स्ट अल्लाउद्दीन खिलजी मैनेज अ विक्ट्री ओवर रामदेवराय यादव सेकंड बैटल अल्लाउद्दीन खिलजी सेंट मलिक काफूर हू मैनेज विक्ट्री ओवर रामदेवराय सन दट इज शंकरदेवराय यादव बट शंकरदेवराय यादव अगेन रिबेल्ड थर्ड टाइम मलिक काफूर वॉज सेंट बाय अल्लाउद्दीन खिलजी वेर एज एट धीस टाइम मलिक काफूर स्टेड एट दौलताबाद एंड देन ऑनवर्ड्स ही मार्च टुवर्ड्स साउथ पार्ट ऑफ India, and then he conquered this entire South Peninsula. Now keep in mind that it is not that uh, every village was annexed by this. So he just marched. Uh, let us check out again on map. As usual, uh, we are drawing map. Make practice of this uh, drawing of map because questions are asked always. And in order to understand the concept. the map drawing is essential so we are aware here somewhere is delhi here is devgiri so uh, here devgiri was made capital after mohammad tughlaq particularly this carried out initially their capital was at delhi only but they tried to control but three time revelations were there and ultimately after death of allauddin khilji again son in law of ramdev rai rebelled uh, named harpal dev rebelled against delhi sultanate and his time mubarak mubarak khan khilji and khushru khan or actually original name is hasan later he was entitled as khushru khan so along with general khushru khan they came to devgiri and then they went till kanyakumari so this is particularly second time muslim invaders entered in south india say uh, what is the difference between north india and south india basic difference is that north india faced continuous foreign attacks right from persian invaders uh, that means in early era then greeks scythians kushan huns gurjar all they came from this portion either from khyber pass or from bolan pass and then northwest india was victim of their attack later on these muslim invaders or rather i should call as arab invaders turk invaders persian invaders uh, uzbek kirgiz like that these invaders they continuously attack and later on mongol invaders they continuously attack from this territory only 
and so north india was victim of their attack north india faced to greater extent these attacks whereas the invader strength diluted until they reach till south india and so uh, none of the invader was able to reach till south india say so whether it is greek attack uh, alexander the great you are aware he just returned from river indus then also demetrius menander they reach till ayodhya so north india only scythians they tried to penetrate here in south part but they were immediately defeated by satvahan kushans they also tried to came uh, or entered in maharashtra but satvahan defeated them and this way continuously whatever the invaders entered in india they are either absorbed in northern india or they are defeated by satvahanas and therefore south indian empire or south indian portion remained free from foreign dominance certain naval attacks may be there but they are very very small some tribal attacks were there on south india but these tribals were not outsiders they were basically from inside part only hilly jungle area from that only they carried out attack and therefore south india remains uh for many years free from foreign attack and that's why malik kafur no doubt he was indian only but he taken out army now here there is no question of indian and non indian here is the question of religion malik kafur was patron of islam and he tried to spread islam over south india whereas the local people they were hindus and then they opposed out this and that's why the rebellion is carried out that empire on rebellion is formed therefore it is called as vijayanagar's empire or vijayanagar's hindu empire for the decades they fought with these muslim invaders uh, say particularly after uh, malik kafur mubarak khan khilji was there he was also very very cruel as you are aware that he ordered to remove skin of harpal de yadav by keeping him alive see the cruelty that malik kafur uh, sorry uh, mubarak khan khilji was showing and like that the hoysal empire was almost troubled out say already yadav yadav kings were uh, considered as initially they were feudal of hoysala but later on they got freedom and they formed their empire they took title as chakravarti so that ramdev rai yadav was having title as praudha pratap purandar chakravarti so this type of titles were there but later on hoysal become weak and then onwards uh, there are two different stories as we are discussing earlier lectures also but i want to detail uh, discuss in detail right now there are two stories particularly the historians from tamil nadu and andhra pradesh they are saying that harihar and bukka were uh, say some princess from that uh, uh, hoysal empire local chieftains are there say they are assuming uh, hoysal as their emperor and like that they were there at time of war of warangal they fled from battlefield but ultimately they were captured by sultan and then taken to delhi where they forced to convert to islam for 10 years period they were staying at delhi and then after perfect islamization and perfect training in northern india uh, that means they were already brave but they got training from these sultans and then they were sent in south india where on returning to south india they went to shrungeri shrungeri is the place where shankaracharya one of the important sacred place of hindu people that is called as peeth so four peeth are there out of that for south india that is inclusive of maharashtra to south india the peeth is there that is called as shrungeri peeth that is there in uh, western ghat mountain at uh, karnataka so there one sage was there named as vidyaranya so Uh, he accepted or reconverted him uh, sorry both of them into hinduism and this way 
they formed their empire. Now they were patron of Hinduism. Their deity was Virupaksha, and that's why at their capital there is fantastic temple that is called as Virupaksha temple. Uh, now here, this story is there. Uh, this is that latter they got victory over Hoysal. In 1346, they got huge victory over Hoysal and his empire was consolidated after that. And that's why some ceremony was celebrated in Shrungeri Ashram. And that is also mentioned. This is one story. Whereas second story, what people from Karnataka are telling that they were not Islamic people or they were not converted to Islam. They were, uh, no doubt they were chieftains, local chieftains only. But they were assuming their overlord as Hoysal, Hoysal king, Ballar III, appointed Hariharu on northern border of their empire, that is Hoysal empire. And therefore, he was defending these Muslim invaders in those days. After death of Hoysal king, Ballar IV, the widow, wife of Ballar III, asked Harihar, to access the throne. This incident happened in 1346 and that is the prominent one and this way they formed their empire. Now uh, may be possible whatever the stories are true. Today according to the books we are getting certain evidences that second story is true rather than first because certain evidences we are getting that certain inscriptions we are getting. So for example uh, an inscription in 3020 that records that King Ballara III founded the town of Virupaksha, uh, Hoshopattana, on the spot where Vijayanagar is located. So, this type of uh, spots are now we are getting. But again, uh, where Vijayanagar is located, there are uh, another story is there. If you are aware uh, of epic Ramayana, there Ram. Uh, when he was uh, in search of uh, Ravan or he, when he was uh, going in search of Sri Lanka or Lanka in those days. At that time, he met with Sugriva and their capital was there that is called as Kishkindha Nagri. That Kishkindha is Hampi. Uh, they says it that city was established somewhere 17 lakh years ago. So, this is really uh, fantastic to know that the city was established 17 lakh years ago because according to our biological knowledge, whatever the advanced man that is Homo sapiens sapiens, all these uh, whatever the advanced man is there that was there somewhere 1 lakh years ago and agricultural man was somewhere 10 to 15 thousand years ago produced. Whereas these people are saying this city is established 17 lakh years ago. So this is really a contradictory data. But uh, if you visit Hampi, you will hear this type of data. Particularly, uh, I will show you certain videos are there. Just search out Maharashtra Bharat on YouTube. You will get these videos where I have recorded that I have visited that place. And they are saying the place is there for 17 lakh years ago. When the question is asked, again thing is that. Uh, Sugriva or Hanuman or Wali, these are not considered as people, man, no, they are considered as apes, monkeys rather. And uh, may be possible because of that this city will be there. I don't know really what is the thing, but the place is really fantastic one. It is very, very difficult to conquer. All over you will get only stones. And various gaps are there in the stone. Hidden caves, hidden paths are there to very great extent. If you want to explore that territory, even six months time is not sufficient to explore that entire territory. All hilly area is there. Uh, what is my recommendation? You can visit once while that Hampi, very fantastic place. Unfortunate to say, uh, more people from outside of India, they are visiting out this place where Indian people are not visiting out this place to that extent. Say certain local people are there, but from outside, say as you are going to visit Taj Mahal 
as you are going to visit Qutub Minar, as you are going to visit Elora, you are not planning to visit Hampi, but really a marvelous city because various people in those days have mentioned that these type of cities are never heard, never observed in any other parts of the world. No doubt this city is now in destruction form, uh, particularly Bahamani kingdoms destroyed this city. But after destruction also, whatever the remains are there, they are sufficient to explore for nearly six months. You can explore this city. Uh, anyway, so this second story says that Harihar and Bukka, they were originally warriors from Karnataka and therefore uh, they founded their empire particularly with permission of Hoysal uh, Queen, uh, Ballada Threes, widow wife. And then they expanded their empire. Now, totally four dynasties ruled over this Vijayanagar's Hindu empire. The first dynasty or founder dynasty that is called as Sangama dynasty. They ruled from 1326, uh, sorry, 1336 to uh, 1485. So more than 100 years first, this dynasty ruled. Then 1485 to 1505, for 20 years, that was Saluva dynasty. So I should mention here, the first dynasty that is Sangama. from 1346 or 36, whatever date you can take, to 1485. Then it was Salu. That was there from 1485 to 1505. So something like phase of Congress, uh, that is moderate period in Congress, that was from 1885 to 1905. So similar here, 1485 to 1505, that was Tuluva, uh, Saluva dynasty. After that, it was ruled <coughs> by Tuluva. So Tuluva started ruling from 1550. Uh, and then onwards, they were Aravidis. From 1505, uh, okay, 1550 to 17th century. Why this period is not prominent one? The reason is that after battle of Rakshas Tagdi, or this is called as battle of Talikota. Uh, the empire crashed down. Emperor was killed. But uh, the empire was existing till 17th century, late of 17th century. Even Maratha king, uh, Shahaji Raja Bhosle, also conquered various parts of these kings. They are called as local chieftain as Nayak. He was appointed to Bangalore or uh, at that time it was called as Bangalur and then they conquered our, our territories around that. So no doubt emperor lost his life but empire was continued till latter part of 17th century also. Uh, this is a brief about Vijayanagar's empire that how empire was founded, what are the theories or uh, stories about that, uh, who is the founder. Founder is Harihara, obviously his brother Bukka was second king of this dynasty name Sangama. Now here, uh, this is the first part of Vijayanagar Empire's uh, part. In previous part of this lecture, we discussed about the foundation of Vijayanagar's empire. Now here, uh, we are now uh, discussing something about this Vijayanagar's empire, particularly uh, this was a state where different linguistic families were used. For example, uh, their capital that is here Hampi 
or Vijayanagar. But it was very close to parts of Andhra Pradesh, Tamil Nadu and Karnataka. Already they were there from Karnataka side. Now various kings ruled over these uh, dynasties. Uh, they promoted various part. Uh, for example, uh, one of the king that is famous king in this uh, all that is Krishna Devaraya. He was also called as Andhra Bhoj. He was patron of Telugu language. So like that, depending upon nature, they promoted the language. Uh, Tamil Nadu, basically various parts of Tamil Nadu were given to Telugu Nayak. Originally Nayaks were there. Nayak means Sanskrit word is their leader. But now uh, various forts were constructed and each fort were handed to Brahman, uh, particularly Telugu Brahman person. Uh, he is called as Durga Danda Nayak. So uh, Durga that is fort, Danda that means uh, having power to punish or rule. So Durga Danda Nayak. Now this way, uh, this rule, particularly uh, Vijayanagar's empire was also in favor of Brahmins uh, in their ruler, uh, their empire, various important prominent positions were there in hands of Brahmins. Particularly, uh, the number of Brahmins were so high uh, in their uh, community, uh, their uh, ruler uh, administration that there were really a few Kshatriyas there in south. And so, uh, as we discuss that this is Vijayanagar's Hindu empire, but it is not really against Muslims. Uh, many Muslim soldiers were there in the army of Vijayanagar's empire. Uh, they fought various wars with Hindu kingdoms also. This is not that they were basically fighting with uh, Muslims. No. But uh, see what is the problem here that uh, I should draw here some line. This territory was in problem. North side of this territory that was their Bahamani kings now. So there was war between constant Bahamani versus uh, Vijayanagar. So this type of war was there and various recorded wars, huge battles were there between Bahamanis and uh, Vijayanagar's empire and therefore it was considered as Hindu Muslim battles but no because various Muslims were installed in their army, uh, Vijayanagar's army. Even uh, they were having various higher positions. So politically, uh, they were no doubt promoting out Hindu religion, but practically there were Muslims in their empire, mosques were there, Muslim rulers were, uh, sorry, Muslim generals were there and they were having very good authorities also. Uh, that's why various constructions in this particular empire, you will get the mix of mixture of architects also you can able to observe that certain confluence of Hindu and Muslim styles of architecture you can observe in this empire. Even uh, war strategy also changed out. They adopted various Muslims war strategy and therefore uh, they were able to defeat or they were able to carve out this empire and again fight with these people. Now here uh, particularly the certain rebellions, internal threats were always there. Particularly Vijayanagar's empire was having direct rule over certain territories around it. That is we can say heartland or core part of his empire. But other parts were just uh, paying tributes to this because vast army was maintained by these uh, Vijayanagar's empire, uh, some books account that they were having standing army somewhere around 15 lakhs. And that's why by constant efforts with Bahamanis, Bahamanis were not able to defeat these uh, Vijayanagar's empire. They attempt a lot, but they were having failure. No doubt certain territories they were able to conquer from Vijayanagar's empire, but Vijayanagar also pay back the same way. Particularly if you are aware that Nijam Shah and Imad Shah both were originally Brahmins from Vijayanagar's empire. 
they were taken as captive and later on they formed their own dynasties under Muslim rule. Now here, uh, Bahamani Sultans, uh, they were trying to defeat but they were not having success. Ultimately, Bahamani Kingdom uh, that split out into five kingdoms as we discussed that Imad Shah, Nijam Shah, both were Indian but uh, Kutub Shah, Irani, Barit Shah, Georgian and Adil Shah, Turki. So like that, these five kingdoms now arised over here. But in order to fight with Vijayanagar, they were forming their alliances. They considered their common enemy as Vijayanagar's Hindu empire. And uh, what is the worst part that many these kingdoms, say for example, Adil Shahi, Nijam Shahi, these two kingdoms and Imad Shahi, they were installed local people that is Marathas in their army and the war was continued. So uh, in Muslim army there were Hindus, they are Marathas whereas in uh, Vijayanagar's army they were having installed Muslims also. Now particularly uh, uh, as we discussed the first dynasty that was Sangam, then it was uh, Saluva, then it was Tuluva. Now here the Tuluva dynasty was founded by Veer Narasimha and then uh, he was succeeded by his younger brother Krishna Devarai. He is considered as the most prominent ruler of Vijayanagar's empire. Many temples in South India they were having uh, or they are having towers erected by Krishna Devarai. Now here basically their empire was based on construction of temples. Vast and huge areas is the prominency of this temple. For example, Virupaksha temple. Very, uh, uh, say it was tall also, but area under their control is very, very high. Now, with this, they encourage the economy and that's why various cities were formed on basis of this type of construction of temples. Particularly, uh, if you observe the South India, they are having huge temples. Not all, all temples are erected by Vijayanagar. No, because Tanjavur etc. territories, they were having already certain temples. And uh, what is the base? That erected temples are also found in Tanjavur. So what is the difference between erected temple? Say earlier day, there was practice of carrying out rock cut temple. That entire hill, they were cutting out. And whatever the rocks are there, remnant, they are converted into temple or uh, in building. Uh, best example, Kailas temple in Elora Kev. That is the best example of rock cut temple. Whereas uh, Tanjavur is showing certain erected temples also. Now, uh, the tributary system was there. But this system was also challenged. Particularly, uh, Chelappa, he was Tamil Brahman general. And he rebelled against Krishna Dev Rai and later Achyut Rai. Now, uh, Bahamani Sultans were in continuous war, but internal threats were there for this empire also. Certain rulers were becoming weak. Then again that dynasty was overtook by another dynasty. Like that, uh, if you uh, observe, the Aliya Ram Raj, that was Krishna Dev Raya's son-in-law, he was a general of Aravidu family and then uh, he seized the throne and this way we got now Aravidis, the family. So Tuluva dynasty ended and Aravidis were there in their uh, rule. Now the last point or important point that how this dynasty ended. somewhere. Uh, Ram Raya, he was a great warrior leader of this Aravidu dynasty. He was ruling over Vijayanagar. In 1564, he forced to fight with combined forces of Sultan. They were Nijam Shah from Ahmadnagar and Adil Shah from Vijapur. Somewhere 8 or 9 lakh army was taken out by Ram, Dev, uh, Ram Rai. How to keep in mind? Say last ruler of Vijayanagar, uh, sorry, last ruler of Devgiri was Ramdev Rai, 
हु डिफीटेड फर्स्ट टाइम बाय अल्लाउद्दीन खिलजी देन ऑनवर्ड्स नो डाउट शंकर देव राय वॉज देअर एंड धीस हरपाल देव बट बिफोर अटैक द लास्ट रूलर वॉज रामदेव राय सो हियर ऑल्सो यू कॉन कीप इन माइंड राम राय जस्ट रिमूव देव फ्रॉम हिम नाउ धीस राम राय वॉज अ ब्रेव मैन ही फॉट वेरियस बैटल्स अगेन आदिल शाह एज वेल एज निजाम शाह बट धीस टाइम Adil Shah and Nizam Shah combined together, and they attacked over South India. They came till Tali Kota, where battle was continued. The first day of battle was indecisive. At night, what happened? We don't know. But uh, army that uh, Ram uh, Ram Raya's army was having Muslim troops also, Muslim generals also. so at night exactly what happened we don't know but on next day when battle started out these two muslim generals betrayed him and because of that ram raya was imprisoned by atil shah he was immediately imprisoned and beheaded his head was uh, kept on spear and their head was shown to vijayanagar army as a result vijayanagar army fled out this way they got victory that adil shah and nizam shah got victory over vijayanagar's empire and then they entered in this hampi where for the period of 6 months they destroyed various parts of hampi but they were not able to gain entire control over south india because their general was just Uh, there around their territory uh, uh ramraya's brother that is tirumal he fled with whole army so he was here somewhere so they were not able to destroy other parts and then they returned back to their capital now uh, this way the vijayanagar's empire as a consolidated power that empire was lost out but local chieftains or nayak they continued to rule for the century further so this is about vijayanagar's empire uh, you have to read from various book in detail because we are not able to give in detail here now we are focusing on mughal history again as we are aware babar zahiruddin al muhammad babar he founded out mughal rule On, in india but uh, he died at very early age just at 48 and he was having rule just for 4 years in india then onwards uh, humayun tried to expand his empire but ultimately humayun lost out his empire with help of persia again humayun established his empire so humayun is second founder of mughal empire but at death again he lost out uh, the mughals lost out delhi so that was akbar under rule of uh, under uh, say guidance of behram khan managed to get victory of delhi that is second battle of panipat beheaded hemu and then uh, mughal empire was founded akbar is real founder of vast mughal empire akbar ruled with various strategies and then uh, he died now akbar was engaged in constant wars he expanded his empire to great extent but uh, he was not able to pay much attention towards his son that is salim or jahangir entitled as jahangir he was son of akbar from jodha bhai uh, from early childhood only salim was alcoholism victim he was fond of alcoholism and in latter phase he used to drink undiluted liquor so just imagine what was the result he lost out kandhar from his power 
Kandar is there in Afghanistan. And so Mughal boundaries become vulnerable for Central Asian attack again. Uh, no doubt in earlier part, uh, he first that is from 1605 to 1613, that was considerable good part of Jangir's rule. Particularly, he strengthened his power over Bengal. Then he tried to deal with Amar Singh, if you are aware that uh, Amar Singh was important and the uh, of Mewad, realize the son of Rana Pratap and then Amar Singh ac accepted suzerainty of Salim or Jahangir. Amar Singh was allowed the same status as the ruler of Jodhpur, Bikaner and Ambar. Now Jahangir continued his father's policy of matrimonial alliances. Now in this all thing, many Afghan nobles were not recognizing Mughal power yet. So Jahangir made them to force them to accept that. And this way Jahangir uh, formed a vast empire that was having uh, control from Gujarat, parts of Maharashtra and this part. Here. Uh, Kandhar was lost, but Bengal was there with them. To the surprise, uh, there was one incident. He killed out Subedar of Avot. And in latter part, latter phase of his life, the widow wife of that Avot Subedar married with Jangir or Salim. Her name Nur Jahan that is the light of world. She was a diplomat. She was very, very intelligent. And what is the important thing? She was Persian by birth, by race, sorry. Now, Jahangir was under influence of liquor. And so, power rolled down in hands of Nur Jahan. She started out Persianization of Mughal court. Try to recollect in earlier form, the kings were allowed to sit in Akbar's court. But now Persian nature, king must stand in front of king of king, that is Bath Shah. Then certain Persian traditions introduced. Art and architecture was influenced by Persian things, dance or whatever the cultural things, everywhere Persian concepts introduced. Various people from Persia got job in India this way. So this way Persianization of Mughal Empire was particularly carried out during rule of Salim or Jahangir because of his wife, one of the wife that is Nur Jahan. Now, Mm, what is the most important thing that coins of Salim were also minted the name of his wife. So both name were appearing on the coin that is name of Salim that is Jahangir as well as Salim or Jahangir minted out coin. That coins were having names of both Nur Jahan as well as Jahangir and that's why this is prominent. Now, uh, say there was some problem that uh, Nurja was already having a daughter. That means from Subedar of Avot. Whereas Shah uh, that uh, Salim was already having son named as Khurram, entitled later on as Shah Jan. So that Khurram uh, was married with this daughter of. Uh, Shah Nur Jahan. Already Nur Jahan was favoring out Shah Jahan as next ruler. But uh, when Jahangir was again and again becoming ill, the practical power was there in hands of Nur Jahan. Shah Jahan rebelled against Nur Jahan or Shah Jahan re rebelled against Jahangir. Now this rebellion was crushed down by 
great noble of mughal court named as mahabat khan and ultimately mahabat khan managed victory over shah jahan shah jahan accepted that he was defeated but at death of jahangir the situation was such that in order to save the situation mahabat khan only appointed shah jahan as next ruler so this way now power descended in hands of shah jahan now here uh, we are discussing about jahangir jahangir was not tolerant towards all religions as his father he killed out various rebellion so called but why there were revelations jahangir was constructing out towers of the heads of rebellion and these huge towers were prominent sign of mughal rule this tradition was continued from ancient period from chengiz khan onwards akbar also followed same thing after conquering udaipur he also made the tower of heads of people or enemies the same way jahangir also continued this type of making of tower so no doubt he was having indian mother he was having great father like akbar but still the cruelty that mongol cruelty was inherited by uh, jahangir also jahangir's rule was no doubt uh, having safeguard because of his father or his father's work his father's strategy rather i should say towards rajputs and rajput because of matrimonial alliances kept calm and empire was there but ultimately northwest frontier become vulnerable to foreign attack particularly they lost out uh, kandhar to iran territory or iranian rulers and this way ultimately now iranis were on border of india in those days this is uh, particularly we are discussing till period of 1627 where jahangir died out and then uh, around 1628 shah jahan become ruler shah jahan continued to rule from 1628 now keep in mind mughals were having success at all over india but deccan particularly nizam shahi kingdom was uh, troubling them a lot shah jahan on 1628 uh, he faced rebellion from south particularly malik ambar he was ruler uh, he was wazir of nizam shah he introduced technique of guerrilla warfare uh, in this war and particularly mughals were not able to overcome this and therefore there were continuous wars between mughals and nizam shah as you are aware that from period of akbar akbar spent out his 8 years to conquer deccan after that jahangir also continued the same and now shah jahan also continued the same around 1633 shah jahan got the success that kingdom of ahmednagar now this is not uh, actually his book it is mentioned as kingdom of ahmednagar but at that time kingdom was ruling from aurangabad uh, that is khadki in those days uh, daulatabad sorry so from daulatabad nizam shah was ruling because already they lost out ahmednagar to mughals so no doubt it is called as uh, nizam shah of vijapur uh, sorry nizam shah of ahmednagar but now they lost out their territory uh, during rule of akbar only so they were ruling from daulatabad and now uh, in 1633 shah jahan managed a victory over nizam shah kingdom here shah jahan uh, proved more superior in nature particularly uh, what akbar was not able to do what jahangir was not able to do that was completed by shah jahan or maybe possible uh, with continuous mughal attacks nizam shah kingdom was almost having problem uh, weakened out and then that was annexed by shah jahan for nizam shah kingdom internal reasons were also there say 
वॉट एवर इट इज निजाम शाही और आदिल शाही और कुतुब शाही पर्टिक्युलरली निजाम शाही एंड आदिल शाही दे वे आर हैविंग कंप्लीट डिपेंडन्सी ओवर मराठा रूलर्स दे वे आर इंस्टॉलिंग मराठाज इन देअर आर्मी बाय अपॉइंटिंग देम बाय अलॉटिंग देम सर्टन थिंग दैट इज कॉल्ड एज वतन और जहागीर दैट इज सिमिलर टू इक्ता सिस्टीम इन अर्लियर डेज सम वॉट चेंजेस आर देअर दैट वील डिस्कस लैटर ऑन नाउ दीज मराठाज बिकम मोर लॉयल टू देअर वतन रादर दैन किंगडम एंड देअर फोर दे चेंज आउट द साइड्स से फॉर एग्जाम्पल वन ऑफ द ग्रेट पर्सन शाहजी राजे भोसले द सन ऑफ मालोजी राजे ही वॉज इन कंटिन्युअस चेंज ऑफ किंगडम फर्स्ट ही वॉज लॉयल टू निजाम शाह ओनली एज देअर जहागीर वॉज अपॉइंटेड बाय अलॉटेड टू हिम बाय निजाम शाह बट निजाम शाह वॉज नॉट अ गुड रूलर एंड विथ पॉलिटिक्स इंटरनल पॉलिटिक्स गोइंग ऑन अल्टिमेटली शाहजी राजे चेंज आउट हिज किंगडम he tried to serve mughals again he tried to serve adil shahi also so this way the ruler uh, these maratha chieftains were changing out their overlord time to time same way uh, the father of jizabai you are aware that uh, she is mother of chatrapati shivaji and at that time uh, his uh, her father lakhuji jadhav supposed to be Uh, that is a descendant of yadav king of devgiri he was serving to nizam shah but later on he changed out side again he joined nizam shahi kingdom and then he was executed in the court of nizam shah only and so this is the reason that nizam shahi was weakened out and ultimately that was annexed by mughals in 1633 shah jahan returned back to agra but to the surprise shahaji one of the important noble of nizam shahi kingdom at that time he again rebelled with shahjan one nizam shah was there uh, say relative of nizam shah was there a five years son named murtaza shahaji coronated him as a new nizam shah and under his guidance nizam shahi kingdom established or rather i should say reestablished now see uh, this is the particular thing here we are having bijapur uh, many uh, books written as bijapur but this is actually bijapur so here uh, i have to now remove these boundaries we can keep in mind that this territory is later on annexed by mughals only uh i must show here some distinct boundaries here is river krishna here is river godavari here is river bhima now almost to the north of godavari was lost in hands of mughal but nizam shah was continued to rule from south of godavari till north of krishna so this territory was ruled by nizam shah but uh, to the south of krishna the territory was ruled by adil shah now here shah ji uh, sorry shah jan got this territory but shah ji rebelled and then adil shah was ready to help shahaji why shahaji raje was held by adil shah the reason was that adil shah was not ready to fight with mughal particularly if nizam shahi kingdom uh, get reconstructed here then mughals will engaged war with nizam shahi kingdom and their boundaries will get secured so that was basic idea and so a uh, khawas khan and uh, another person so adil shah was helping shah ji now shah ji uh, created nizam shahi recreated rather nizam shahi kingdom he almost regained 
the territory lost in hands of Mughals. And ultimately, Shah Jahan decided to destroy this Deccan kingdom, particularly Nizam Shahi kingdom. Uh, again, why again? Because this time he sent massive army under leadership of Mahabad Khan. 80,000 Mughal army entered in Maharashtra. And the battle started over South India. Whereas Mughals were now uh, having a massive army, whereas Shahji's newly formed empire, that is also under name of Nijam Shahi, was fighting with this Mughal, held by Adil Shahi, Murar Jagdev, Khawas Khan, while helping Shahji Raje from Adil Shahi side. And then Mahabad Khan was defeated badly with Shahji Raje. The Mughals were challenged out by South India and they returned back. Mahabad Khan lost out his all the terror and ultimately uh, Shah Jan wrote him a letter that, and it is said that that letter was a poisoned one and Mahabad Khan died because of that. I don't know exactly what happened there. But then in 1636, Shah Jan himself arrived again on the horizon of Deccan to conquer Nijam Shahi kingdom. Now there was now straightway battle between Shah Jiraje and Shah Jahan. Why? Because Adil Shah was kept away from the battle. Diplomatically Shah Jahan asked Adil Shah that not to help a Hindu Sardar in the battle of this Muslim field. Instead of that, you should help us. For that purpose, we can give half of Adil Shahi, uh, Nijam Shahi kingdom to Adil Shah. And Adil Shah accepted because he also managed that keeping Mughal away from the border. And then Randullah Khan was set to defeat Shahji Raje. Whereas from north side, Shah Jan arrived in the field and ultimately, in 1636, Shahaji was permanently defeated by Mughals. But uh, see the diplomacy of Adil Shah. Adil Shah accepted Shahaji as his Nobel. He was continued to get his Jahagir over Pune. Shahajan was really a clever person, intelligent person. He asked. Nijam Shah, uh, Adil Shah, that okay, we are aware that you are keeping Shahji with you. We are aware of the reason, but only one important message we want to give that don't keep Shahji in Maharashtra. Keep it away from Maharashtra. And then Shahji Raje was allotted Jahagir of here, that is today called as Bengaluru. In those days it was called as Bangalur. So, this Bangalore was allotted as capital, uh, sorry, allotted as Jagir for Shahji. For several hundred kilometers away from Maharashtra, he was uh, allowed to rule. Whereas now, uh, till river Bhima, north of river Bhima was handed to Mughals, south of river Bhima was handed to Adil Shahi. Adil Shah managed, number one, to keep Mughal outside his territory. Yes, so this can be served as buffer zone between Mughals and Adil Shahi. Secondly, he managed to take Shahji with him because Shahji was a great warrior, great diplomat and very, very brave person. He defeated Mughal army with 80,000 army. He was able to defeat Mughal army that is of 80,000. And therefore, he kept Shah Jiraje with him. So, if next time Mughals arrived on the Adil Shahi kingdom, then Shah Ji is there with Adil Shah. So, this was basic idea. And this way, a small settlement was made from South India. So, this way, Shah Jan managed to solve problem of Deccan. But in that way, he lost out the particular territory. Uh, I should mark here. 
that this territory and that's why their boundaries was not directly sharing out with adil shah but now this boundary uh, this newly conquered territory was ruled by adil shah so this way the bhima river was considered as boundary between mughals and adil shahi kingdom this is they made for a while he returned back to delhi or agra and later on uh, he appointed his son uh, as a viceroy of uh, or say subedar of this newly conquered territory where aurangzeb is name of son he came in maharashtra he was not uh, interested in daulatabad daulatabad was prominent place over here but just beside that there was a small city named as khadki so aurangzeb used to set his base camp at khadki so till that their base camp was there in burhanpur that is on border of maharashtra but it is there in madhya pradesh south border of madhya pradesh that burhanpur was there we discussed in earlier lecture that uh, akbar the great conquered his fort of ashirgad of burhanpur and then he said i have opened the door of south so this way burhanpur was conquered and then base camp was set at burhanpur but now that shifted from burhanpur to south part that is at khadki but aurangzeb named his city as his city as aurangabad so this way a city formed aurangabad that is just beside daulatabad somewhere 15 or 20 km away from aurang uh, devagiri this city is there that is khadki later on named as aurangabad so this way a settlement carried out by shah jahan at south india now towards northwest part you are aware towards northwest part of afghanistan there is called as balkh balik or bactria shah jahan tried to conquer bactria shah jahan tried to conquer samarkand the homeland of mughals shah jahan tried to conquer kandhar again which was lost during rule of jahangir shah jahan got kandhar from iranians uh, in the particularly uh, 1638 he got kandhar but again uh, in a period of 11 years that is in 1649 kandhar was lost to iranian again so this way this northwest frontier was a biggest problem in those days for mughals because they were again and again trying to get supremacy over northwest frontier because they were also outsiders they were aware that outsider can attack from this side in order to make secure this border these people were continuously getting war and they were trying to get this northwest frontier but the most important thing shah jahan carried out that he was able to annex this territory this is called as kamarup in now it is called as assam but he annexed out this kamarup kingdom uh now the problem was that shah jahan is the unlucky person in mughal dynasty he rebelled against his father where he was not successful jahangir also rebelled against his father he was also not successful but shah jahan's revelation jahangir was able to crush but shah jahan rebelled against his father not success but at end of life shah jahan's son aurangzeb rebelled against him and what is the worst part that shah jahan was not able to crush down his rebellion the actual reasons are various reasons are there one of the reason that shah jahan was ill shah jahan was having a wife uh, his wife was persian wife named as arjumand banu later on uh, she is called as mumtaz mahal i don't know exactly from what period but uh, her name was originally arjumand banu she was persian uh in uh, birth uh, sorry in race and some uh, 14 uh, children were there from this arjumand banu out of that the first was uh, begum uh, or say uh, daughter second was darashikoh 
so from son side the elder son was darashiko then murad shuja then aurangzeb but aurangzeb proved more diplomat more cruel more intelligent and more lucky also from all these other people darashiko was patron of sanskrit language he was tolerant to all religion he was more diplo uh, sorry more liberal and uh, under his influence only that darashiko's influence only uh, because darashiko was patron of sanskrit language he was patron of sanskrit literature uh, he listened to upanishad and then he said that like that some upanishad must be there in islam and so under his influence allopanishad was uh, made these all activities aurangzeb was thinking that not good and then he managed a fight again again there was supremacy war war was there between sons of shahjan as well as with shahjan and aurangzeb proved victorious one aurangzeb was having one of the important nobel of the mughal court that great nobel was shaiste khan his a uh, maternal uncle he managed and help aurangzeb to get victory over various opponents another important person from court was in favor of aurangzeb that was mirza raja jai singh from ambar uh, as we are aware that these dynasties were important particularly for mughal empire so maharaja of ambar that is mirza raja jai singh he was also great diplomat and he was uh, from kabul kandar to maharashtra all territories he was there in the war so mirza raja jai singh was also help aurangzeb whereas jaswant singh he tried to support opponents uh, of aurangzeb where he was defeated by aurangzeb in battlefield and ultimately aurangzeb managed victory he imprisoned his own father in the fort of agra he killed out his brothers darashikoh murad and shuja brutally say uh, for the purpose of rule killing is essential all right but uh, he killed mercilessly a painful death was delivered to these all his own brothers even a son of darashikoh just 18 years old aurangzeb asked him what do you want really that son was clever he said i know you are going to ask me but you are not giving that so i want only one thing that i want only honor killing like death i don't want painful death from you and aurangzeb executed him also so this way aurangzeb was uh, we can say a wicked rather than ambitious here may be possible he was creating this type of terror that i am killing my own brothers i am killing my nephew i am imprisoning out my father so who are you you have to accept what i am going to tell so this type of suzernity uh, aurangzeb was there to establish ultimately uh, shah jahan's health was declining and by taking advantage of that aurangzeb conquered the throne whereas shah jahan was kept alive in battle of dharmad darashiko was defeated and then shah jahan was impressed in agra fort till his death in 1666 over the period of 9 years aurangzeb kept him in prison uh, this is the end of jahangir uh, sorry end of shahjan